Every day starts early for Muslims across the globe. Begins with the Azan before the sun rises. The call for the faithful gathers everyone in prayer called Al-Fajr or the dawn in Arabic. It is the first of the five daily prayers recited by practicing Muslims from dawn until daybreak and is believed to be God's most favored prayer since others are still asleep. Then, fasting begins and Muslims continue to pray throughout the day, similar to the regular days. Starting your life with worshiping God. What's better than that? Giving yourself a break and then you're starting your machines. Moving furthermore to the Dhuhr time where it's the sun is at the center of the sky and a little bit deviated from that, a pause time. Now you have to give yourself a pause from this long time of working, uh, having your food after the pray and then sleeping. Give yourself a break of sleeping from Dhuhr time to Asr time. So this is your resting. Asr time again, get up, get fresh, pray, start your time again and work from Asr to Maghrib. Maghrib is the dawn, is the sunset time. Now at the sunset, nothing is there, everything is closing, life is also closing. Close your life, come back to your home and have your food. Then pray for Isha, lasting again for the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are reminding yourself that you are going to now sleep. After the Isha, sleep. All able-bodied Muslims are required to fast during Ramadan, except for those who have health conditions. Meanwhile, parents start training children before they reach puberty to prepare them for fasting and enable them to do it properly. I think for children, it depends on the age when they should be start trained on fasting. And I, as far as my children were concerned, I trained them to fast in uh, intervals. So the first time they fasted, they fasted for two hours, three hours, half a day, and gradually until they adopted the whole day fasting. There are two main meals for Muslims during the holy month, the suhoor, a meal eaten in the morning that is highly regarded in Islamic tradition, and iftar, a meal eaten after sunset to end the day of fasting. The food is the, might vary from here to Saudi Arabia, to Syria, to Morocco, to Egypt, to Turkey, to Indonesia. It's just the food. We, we like as locals to start with the dates the dates and the, um, the leban, which is the uh, buttermilk, if it's available, or dates with water. And then we would uh, pray, and after the prayer, people would sit, relax, while they're preparing the food or to be served, and then everyone gathers for the main, for the main dish. <laughs> Though the holy month is well known to be a time of fasting from food and water along with other things, food still plays an important role. Iftar or the evening meal has become a very significant and well-observed meal of the day. It began as a simple practice that is far more modest than what we know at present. During this time of the year, uh, in, the, in the Emirates anyways, the traditional food that we have, we usually start breaking the fast uh, by dates and water. Iftar or breaking of the fast is almost similar across the globe, except for a few differences in the dishes being served due to a number of varying cultures and traditions. Nowadays, iftar is a meal that's looked forward to with anticipation by both Muslims and non-Muslims. And right here in the UAE where hundreds of nationalities are living together, Iftar is a celebration and more than just a meal to break one's fast. Because at the end of the day, we all live together in the same place and this is our home. And why would you want, you know, um, aggression in your home? So I'm, I'm really glad that whoever walks out of this place takes something good with him. And you can see it in their eyes. You, you don't even need me to tell you. Just ask anyone who comes to the Sheikh Mohammed Center for Culture Understand. They walk out understanding actually what the culture and religion means.